بالميامين هداتي من بني هاشم هداتي من بني هاشم في خاتم النبيين اخ الوحي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our discussion, The Great Trust. It is indeed very true, the best place to train a child is the home, and the best educators and trainers of the child are its parents, and the best time to train the child is the early stages of its life. The most delicate and crucial period of life is the childhood period. The foundation of the future of the child's personality is established at this time. And the slightest error or neglect might cause an irreparable harm to the child's development. In fact, the first three years of the child's life play a very important role in the development of its future. And perhaps most people don't realize this, where they say that small children don't even have the capacity to understand because they can't even speak. That means they can't even express their feelings. Whereas this is not true. And we believe these first periods of the child's life can either break or make a child's life. In our session so far, we discussed the constructive and the destructive words and how words have an impact on the child's ability to grow. To discuss this and further points, we will invite and welcome our Alima Razia Batul Najafi to our show. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam Thank you for again blessing us with your presence and um, chatting us with lots of uh, information. Um, Alhamdulillah, so far we've been able to discuss many aspects of upbringing, including nursing and how beneficial it is for the child's growth. Um, today, before we further into our child's uh, development and upbringing, uh, we would like to know if you can, for the benefit of our viewers, tell us that what Islam says about the recommended or the obligatory actions after a child's birth, right, uh, right after the child is born, what should the parents do that will make its future bright? Yeah, Bismillah rahman rahim uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, our uh, traditions and um, Quranic verses are full of, you know, uh, guidance for us, even for this uh, particular issue. And um, as we know that uh, from zero to seven, uh, the age, and from the days from zero to seven, we have special some amal, some deeds uh, for right. uh, this tarbiyat, for this um, training, and. Um, F for zero to seven days, like when when uh, the child, the child born. yeah mm -hmm. born, the first uh, thing which we should do, Islam says that those are very very important, and we have some special um, deeds and amal for uh, until seven days, seven like days. especially mm -hmm. the seven days, very important mm -hmm. in the eyes of that Islam. That means the first seven days of the child's yes. life are so yeah. important. Yeah. Islam has rules and yes. information yes. for those days. Okay. And especially mm -hmm. the seven, you know, the number seven, seven. Yeah, Islam mm -hmm. is saying. So maybe uh, because of uh, that, that um, we have seven doors of hell. Mm -hmm, right. So if uh, we do this kind of amal and this mustahaba, this recommended deeds, so m inshallah we will able to close the all seven uh, seven doors of yeah. health uh, for uh, you know even for parents uh, and for child and um, islam is very you know uh, giving uh, emphasis on numbers in like how we know about 14 or 12 or mm -hmm. 40 you know 40 right, days the number 40 amal, is yeah, 40 yeah. Mm -hmm. so here seven uh, yeah, because uh, maybe yeah, like one of the reason is this that like we have seven doors of hell we have uh, seven heaven seven um, earth uh, you know the right. levels of earth mm -hmm. And we have seven uh, like parts of the body which we should put on the earth uh, during yes, such sajda. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, even mm -hmm. the tawaf is seven times right. and mm -hmm. um, you know, walking between uh, say and yeah, yeah. It's saf important saf during Hajj, usually yes, number seven. Yes, number right. seven. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, in, in Hawamim, uh, like um, we have some surahs in Quran, surah in Quran, which start with 
ha, meem, and those are seven because, again, you know, the one of the reason which um, our tradition is giving is that because of the seven doors of the hell, and you know, and the takbirat which we it's recommended to you know uh, say before the takbiratul ahram, mm -hmm. and there's a seven takbirat like, like mm -hmm. we say Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, because uh, according to riwayat and hadith. Each and every takbir which we say like Allahu Akbar can remove uh, one curtain uh, be between us and Allah. Mm -hmm. Each and every like um, Allahu Akbar has that much power or can you know or close the one of the door of the hell for us. Oh, okay. That's why mm -hmm. we should uh, say seven times Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar before uh, go to yeah, namaz. So mm -hmm. that must, uh, it, it is important. Uh, even the action it says it has a message like you say Allahu Akbar like everything should be uh, behind mm -hmm. everything we should ignore we should you know uh, put our all intention and you know all focus yeah on focus Allah on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only so that's why it's the seven numbers the seven yes. days yes yes for the yes. child yeah mm -hmm. and and I, I'm sure you know these these seven amal which inshallah I want to share with you uh, most of the people alhamdulillah they are doing it you know that mm -hmm. is very common between us but we don't know the you know significant behind it right. we don't mm -hmm. know like why we should do uh, mm -hmm. for what it is just we do because of sawab because right. of yeah, because ajr. It's in the yes, so yes, yes, because of sunnah, right. yes mm -hmm. so uh, the first thing which um, you know is islam says that why we should this amal is the most important cause and uh, you know the uh, illat behind it is that to keep shaitan away Mm -hmm. And if you go, inshallah, one day we will uh, just only, you know, exclusively we will talk about the dua which Imam Zain al Abidin has recommended um, for, for, you know, for parents to mm -hmm. uh, recite for their children that one. That uh, the big chapter uh, of uh, that dua, big paragraph of that dua is uh, just for about shaitan like mm -hmm. you know the most biggest uh, struggle and jihad is yeah right. for mm -hmm. us to keep him away from our daily life you know and mm -hmm. for, for, from our amal and whatever we are doing so here even you know uh, surah isra number 64 it says that wa sharikum fil amwali wal awlad like shaitan can Allah has given him this power that he can be, you know, he has this um, permission from Allah to associate with, uh, you know, our um, wealth and our chi children. Mm -hmm. So if I want, you know, uh, keep him away from my child and my children, so I should do some kind of amal To keep him away from yes. our children. Yes. Right. So and, and, and it starts like Alhamdulillah how we have started our program from before you know marriage from right. our own mm -hmm. training self training and then you know during um, uh, conception and mm -hmm. you know some amal we should do during pregnancy that you know um, even uh, all, all other amal which we have uh, you know discussed um, right. uh, all together mm -hmm. it shows that from that time we are preparing uh, to train our child in the best way and keep shaitan away, away from, from our right. amal. Okay, so coming to amal or alama, uh, what are those seven amal? If you could start with day one for the, um, the first amal, starting from the birth of the yes, child. Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah, the f uh, first um, uh, amal is first of all when a uh, baby uh, will born, uh, so we will put him in. Uh, clothes so Islam right. Islam mm -hmm. is also very sensitive about the color of that okay. cloth yeah mm -hmm. Islam says it should be it's better it should be a white color mm -hmm. so again um, you know it, it reminds that um, and, and Quran has compared it's my I'm not comparing because Quran says the way you have come alone uh, from that you know uh, world which was mm -hmm. Alam Izzar to this world uh, in, uh, you will come again towards me alone like we have oh, okay. you know our mm -hmm. birth was alone and we, we will die, die alone, yeah, alone. Well. Mm -hmm. so uh, uh, Quran is comparing this two uh, you know coming and going and you know two kind of birth and two kind of you know shifting from one world mm -hmm. to other world 
so for both worlds uh, you know there are some kind of amal and some kind of some some conditions and some recommended things so how we have kafan you know it should right. be wide how we go to, for we, we wear ihram it should be wide because if you want to go and visit baytullah so you are showing allah that you know i'm trying to be a clean and you know pure, yeah, pure, soul, yeah, right. pure soul. so the, the apparent way of showing purity is the wearing white yes right. yes mm -hmm. so here we should uh, you know cover our child newborn child in in white clothes like mm -hmm. uh, it was so important in the eyes of ahlul bayt because uh, tradition says that uh, when uh, imam hassan alayhi salam's birth uh, uh, took place and um, uh, when prophet wants to say like um, azan and qama and dua he wants to pray for him when he saw that it, he was in um, yellow clothes so he, he become uh, you know a bit angry and he said why yellow color it should be white mm -hmm. so first of all whatever we know we know is that white is very pure and neat right, you know yeah. for neatness mm -hmm. it is recommended again right, yeah mm -hmm. and then we know about spiritual one is that because you know it shows that how baby is uh, pure and you know full of um, tawheed mm -hmm. and that his, mm -hmm. his nature is mm -hmm. clean still pure so we should uh, put him put him in the, the white, yeah, cloth. white cloth uh, that's what i see normally in even when hospitals it's a, it's a normal it's a norm that the child is wrapped in white but we didn't know the philosophy behind yeah, the yeah. wrapping in white cloth so mm -hmm. now we know the spiritual benefit and yes. the physical benefit yes. of the child so and and not only that uh, zahra uh, our prophet's um, favorite color was white mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he used to wear white color and it shows that we we came pure and we will go inshallah pure so islam said you know you you should wear white and you go with white so in between as much as you can you we should wear white, white you know especially right. namaz time again right. it's sawab mm -hmm. you know to wear white chadar right. white you know mm -hmm. uh, scarf or white dress so because of you know one benefit is definitely it's uh, you know pure and okay. and need neatness mm -hmm. but there are other um, for for soul and for spirit and for body there are many benefits mm -hmm. which we don't know exactly the mm -hmm. things which we know is that mm -hmm. and the second thing is about azan wa qama right. you know as mm -hmm. we know that again uh, lots of tradition like you know if you have some traditions and ahadis that is okay you say but if you have so many each and every for each and every imam you have that you know how uh, the imam has done for their sons or for, for their daughters this amal so you, you it, it shows that this you know issue is so very important, important yeah, in their crucial. eyes mm -hmm. yes so mm -hmm. that's why they are uh, keep telling us uh, mm -hmm. this kind of amal so one is um, you know as we know our our prophet has said many times that we should recite azan in uh, right um, uh, ear of mm -hmm. the child and Iqama in in the left, left of the chair. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay, thank you, Alma. We'll have to take a break, short break, and uh, we'll continue with where we left after the break. Uh, stay in touch. <laughs> Welcome back, our viewers, and uh, we were talking about the amals to be done after the child is born, and we finished the first amal that was to cover the child or wrap a child in a white piece of cloth, and the second was the azan and akama, and we'll welcome our alima once back uh, again, and we'll continue from where we left about the azan and akama yeah. to be recited for the child. Yeah, there are uh, so many uh, hadiths which says that uh, there are some, again, uh, physical benefit, spiritual benefit, uh, again, um, you know, keeping away from shaitan. And there are some aqaidi, um, like uh, some educational, you know, benefit behind it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, uh, first of all, even they said that a um, uh, hadith is so beautiful, it says that uh, if you feel that your your child is uh, uh, is akhlaq is not good man sa akhulquhu fa fi uzni like if you feel that somebody's akhlaq behavior manners are not good you, you know he's misbehaving so you recite azan in his ears because mm -hmm. azan gives him you know that 
calmness, yeah, benzi, purification. Benzi. So uh, th this we can find as a, as a spiritual benefit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, even for physical hadiths, there are some kind of uh, diseases for that. Um, this uh, azan and aqama is very, very beneficial, very, very good. And um, other things uh, we, which we can see is that uh, the child, not even for his akhlaq, uh, he he will he he can enjoy by by you know listening the um, azan and the the of Yeah, azan and the like um, Imam Raza alayhi salam says, "Azin fi baytik, fa innahu yatrud al-shaytan wa yustahab min ajal al-sabyan." Like in your house, it is recommended to recite azan loudly even after the birth because I, I, I want to say that what is the benefit of this azan mm -hmm. and aqama, why we should say in the beginning, you know, uh, straight after the birth. Because Imam Raza is saying even after the birth, you know, you should recite, keep reciting this azan and aqama. Why? Because uh, shaitan will go away from that house and it is very beneficial for kids but we don't know what is that benefit but but you know for other things unfortunately like how we know that uh, any kind of voice uh, which a child listen uh, there are some uh, effects Benef or yeah, benefits mm -hmm. but you know the, the non-muslims because they believe on only um, the physical benefit of the child so they do a lot of experiment but we never do about azan and iqama right. because we as a muslim we are you know unfortunately we are very behind and you know we are very backward in these kind of things unfortunately but but I, I'm, I'm sure if if they were you know instead of us they have done many many experiment that okay how uh, azan and aqama can bring change in in child's um, you know character and right. behavior mm -hmm. and when azan and aqama is going on what kind of you know uh, things they can see they can you know they, they can make it very visible for us but uh, we have some uh, mm, uh, evidence uh, from um, uh, history, like they said about uh, Sayyid Murtaza. Sayyid Murtaza, as we know, he is a brother of Sayyid Razi. Right. And you know Sayyid Razi, who he is? Yeah, he's the compiler of yeah. Nashid Yeah, mm -hmm. so he's that great man. So their teacher was Sheikh Mufid, he was the great teacher. And um, once Sayyid Raz, uh, Murtaza, he uh, says to uh, his mother that you know whenever I go to my my teacher's uh, lecture uh, there's I feel that I have read it before but I know it's my first time and the first time I'm I'm, I'm I'm studying this subject this topic so my, uh, my, uh, his mother says that uh, which uh, chapter and which book you are studying so he said he explained everything um, specifically then um, she thought and she said that, oh, yeah, uh, you know, when you are newborn baby and you are, uh, you know, uh, caught was in the same room where your father used to teach the same subject and the same, you know, chapter. So you are a newborn baby, but you used to listen. Yes, so whatever, right. yeah, we are listening, mm -hmm. it will it remain. Yeah, that much that even he is feeling that I know everything, mm -hmm. you know, something, every, it thinks that it is repeating repeating for, for me, it's a reputation for me. And then uh, another, you know, uh, story we have that um, there is an alim and he said that one man came to me and he said, I want to become Muslim. Uh, so he asked that why you want to become Muslim, what is the reason? So he said, uh, once I was crossing uh, from um, a Muslim country and I listened to Azan and Azan, so I feel some kind of attraction be uh, towards the Azan and I, I stood and I, you know, listened to, it, listened to it and then I did a bit research about Azan and about Islam and I, I didn't know anything about Islam. So then he started, the Alim was so mashallah smart and he said, there is some reason why you get attracted, attracted by Azan. Azan right? Yeah, even you have born uh, in in non-Muslim family. So he went, he said, uh, call his mother. Mm -hmm. And mother came and he, st he asked and he did all this um, the research. So mother said, I don't know, nothing I have done and I don't have any any Muslim Connection friend, with, yeah, nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then again and again, when she, she uh, thinks a lot, then she said, oh yeah, when he born in that country, the, uh, one our neighbor was Muslim. 
and he came to say you know um, for um, mobile to meet the child uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. so he he took my my child and he said something in his mm -hmm. Uh, ears yes, okay. so that was maybe azan and that's mm -hmm. why my you know son has mm -hmm. this much attachment yeah uh -huh. with that azan so this only few evidence we have and stories we have in in history which shows that how much change uh, can bring you know this kind of uh, saying of allah which because we say azan is the hadith qudsi it's from allah 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 is teaching us so it's allah's wording allah's message in this word Okay, so uh, this was the second amal to recite the azan and akama for yes, the yes. newborn child. And we know what benefits it has for the child in the future, of course. Uh, what, what would be the next, con uh, the next few amals? As you mentioned, there are seven altogether. Yeah, the third amal which we should do for our newborn baby is uh, to give him something to eat, to taste. The first taste, the first food. I know uh, many people they say you know um, uh, doctors they don't suggest it right. but mm -hmm. yeah if we mm, believe on our you know doctrine our aqaid our uh, ideology which is Islam so we should do it as as a, as a recommended and with thing. With the faith that no harm will yes, come to the baby. Yes definitely mm -hmm. because faith and your the sultanity it has lots of effect and I have seen I have you know have lot of experience in my life that if mother especially about you know everything um, even taking many steps in life if, if it goes uh, towards like uh, in benefit of Islam if you take it and whole world is if you even against, it's against it, it yeah you know no harm, you, come to no the harm mm -hmm. never ever you know because that kind of you know courage which you have because of your aqidah because of your you know thoughts so you will you know be successful in your inshallah goal so here they said that first you know food you know, for child uh, had, uh, there are many hadith which says that uh, I, I'm, I'm giving just the conclusion that you know or if, if whatever is available mm -hmm. uh, but the sawab the recommended things are dates okay. or um, water especially the frat uh, mm -hmm. rivers water right. yeah mm -hmm. and the third thing is um, the mud of Imam Hussein mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this three things some some tradition even they said if you don't have the water of rat even you can give the water of rain rain water mm -hmm. it's pure and it's uh, you know it has some kind of shifa so uh, what is the reasons again they said because uh, imam jafar sadiq alayhi salam he's saying hussein <laughs> It's the biggest thing which parents want for their children, mm -hmm. like complete protection from, you know, physically and inshallah more spiritually. So if you uh, taste your child, the first thing after birth, it, if, if it is the turbat of Imam Hussain, then you have complete protection from worldly, you know, uh, whatever uh, difficulties, worries yeah, worries, and uh, from hereafter both for, for, for you know both worlds and the second thing about Abi Farad they have said that you know give your child Abi Farad because if you give uh, the as a first food then they have uh, you know um, certainly they have the love of Ahlul Bayt in their mm -hmm. heart so if you want to put and nowadays how it much we need hard, yeah. Right? yeah you know there's mm -hmm. the biggest you know challenge for for the uh, for and the parents, parents yeah yes yes right. so you can instill easily by giving them abe frat um, and the water of frat and the third thing uh, about um, dates they said because it was the sunnah and character of our rasul muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he gave uh, dates to imam hassan and imam hussein and for, uh, for their own uh, grandchildren okay. so um, again it shows that you know there are a lot of benefits for it okay, so, Alima, so far we have learned these three uh, miles to be done within the seven days of the child's birth. One was to make sure that we wrap the child in white cloth. Second is to recite azan and akama in the ears. And then to what foods to present to the child or to give the child to taste. Okay, so what's the fourth amal to be done within these seven important days after the birth? Yeah, within seven days, 
The fourth one is even we do it, but maybe, maybe you know we don't know it is sawab sometimes, you know, right. which mm -hmm. is uh, going for congratulating okay. even it is the sawab, it is the okay. seerat of Rasulullah, it is the sunnah of Rasulullah. We do it because it's the society yeah, way no, of the no. norm of visiting the yeah. newborn house. But okay. if we do for Qurbatin Allah mm -hmm. and because of our Aima and Ahlul Bayt, because they yeah. have mm -hmm. done and they have told us, they have taught mm -hmm. us that we have to do like that. If it is a um, girl, so it is the mercy of Allah, it is rahmat. And if it is a boy, then it is the uh, blessing of Allah. So I think, you know, because we know this kind of ahadith and, uh, you know, Zahra, I was thinking, why we ask that, you know, Allah has given you girl or boy, we should ask, it is rahmat or ni'mat. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. it's a so mm -hmm. beautiful way to say. So they mm -hmm. say it is rahmat. So it, mm -hmm. it looks more oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah it is so mercy So that's a good Allah. point for our viewers. When they go to visit uh, yeah. the child, they should always... Um, maybe present the question this way yeah. if they want to ask the name of the child or to know if it's um, a rahmat yeah. or a ni'mat. So right. and, and why Islam says, Islam is keep encouraging that go to visit them, congratulation them and um, you know do uh, dua for them because you know sometimes parents are not happy you know they don't want it this second or third or fourth baby you mm -hmm. know sometimes they don't want the girl or boy you know again mm -hmm. and again so if you go and you say mubarak allah mm -hmm. you know it, it it is the mm -hmm. blessful you know mm -hmm. child for you and you you tell them that all uh, blessing of the child and for uh, parents so mm -hmm. it give them you know energy the and yeah, yeah. courage mm -hmm. so islam is uh, giving a lot of uh, you know importance for it. Mm -hmm. And there is only I want to share one story that's in the you know character of our um, uh, Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It said that once Abdullah ibn Hassan, Abdullah ibn Abbas, when he didn't come to attend the namaz al zohar because they used to meet on mosque uh, during you know you know five times a day or three times mm -hmm. a day. How beautiful life it was! So they said, why Abdullah is not on you know namaz uh, time? So they said uh, to Prophet that Allah has given him a child. So Prophet said, okay, then let's go after namaz to say congratulations to him. So all of them, they went to say, and what Prophet he said when he met him, he said that, Shakarat al-wahib wa burik laka fil muhib. Like you, uh, Allah, may Allah give you this, um, you know, tawfiq to do shukr to your uh, Lord, to your Allah, which is given this gift blessed to you. you yeah, blessed child. to you. And, and first of all, Allah, uh, you know, he's saying to Father, then he's thing about the child that you know and inshallah th this child would be a blissful child for you in this world and hereafter so it was the character of our Nabi our prophet then he used to take the child and you know gives a lot of Lots dua of to, the to, child. to the child okay yeah. so um, so for our viewers unfortunately our time is over for today but uh, and so far alhamdulillah we've been able to cover four points or four amals to be done after the birth of the child. And we'll g get back to you next week with the rest, uh, the, the, the next three amals. So do uh, be there and uh, receive all the next information for next week. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.